have heard of the Johnston Farmhouse and Mike Weaver Drain Tile Museum, but do you know why drain tile is important? This is a short introduction to John Johnston and drain tile. John Johnston was born in 1791 in Scotland. He was raised by his grandfather, who taught the boy everything he knew about drainage. While tending sheep as a young man, he read agricultural newspapers and books about farming, including an account of the mode of draining land. Johnston married Margaret Alexander in 1818. He was a successful farmer, but a drop in prices made him look toward America. He had family in New York City and central New York, and had heard of the fertile land in the Finger Lakes. He left Scotland alone in April 1821. According to family lore, his in-laws hoped he would either decide to come back to Scotland or never be heard of again. They didn't want their daughter taken to that far-off, dismal place. Johnson came to Geneva on a cousin's recommendation. After visiting Chicago and Rochester, which were both small trading posts at the time, he came back here. He purchased a 112-acre farm on the east side of Seneca Lake. Johnson sent for his family to join him. They arrived in 1822 in time to see his first crop of barley fail. He quickly took steps to improve his land. The farm he purchased had years of rotted manure that had never been put on the land. He hired a man with a cart to spread the manure, and Johnston plowed it under. After several years, he had money to buy 1,000 bushels of lime and spread it on the fields to add calcium to the soil. These two measures improved his crop yield, but he felt his land could be better if it were drained. These images may be the simplest explanation of underdrainage. Heavy clay soil, or a field that is fed by an underwater source, retains water. When crops are planted in the spring, roots stop growing downward when they reach water. When fields dry out in the heat of summer, the root structure can't support the plants. Underdrainage lowers the water table in wet fields, promoting strong roots. It also allows farmers to work the fields earlier than undrained fields. Parallel lines are laid about three feet deep. They run into a large main line that takes the water to a drainage ditch. Underdraining was known in America using stones, wood, and other materials to keep ditches open. Scottish and English farmers used fired clay for drainage. In the words of John Johnston, My first efforts for more perfect drainage were made in 1835, when I imported a pattern of drain tile from Scotland and caused them to be made in this neighborhood by hand labor. Benjamin Whartonby of Waterloo, a potter, produced 3,000 tiles for Johnston. Being a careful man, Johnston ditched and tiled a 10-acre field and kept records to compare its yield to surrounding fields. His wheat crop went from 5 bushels an acre to 50 bushels an acre on the drained land. Drain tile is still used today in the form of perforated plastic tubing. If you drive past a farm field and see a pipe draining into an open ditch, that's drain tile at work. In this area, drain tile is usually installed to replace old drain lines or to provide more intensive drainage. The Johnson House and Mike Weaver Drain Tile Museum are open on weekends from May 1st through October 31st. The house has been restored to its 19th century appearance, and the museum has a detailed history of drain tile. For more information, go to www.genevahistoricalsociety.com. Thank you.